and welcome to the Layouts Animation Show. Can you hear me okay? Yes, now. Great, amazing. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Nicole Turk. I've been an Android developer for some years, and you can find me online in these handlers. Don't ask about the underscore and the dash. Um, great, but without all the way, let's jump right away into our program. In this talk, we're going to be covering four main things. First, we're going to go over some layout animation basics. Then, we're going to go over our composable animation APIs. Third, we're going to go, of course, on how to customize them. And last but not least, we're going to see a lot of random shapes, animated ones, of course. <laughs> so let's jump right away into the basics. And let's start with asking ourselves, what are actually the layout animations? Well, in short, you can define them as animations that animate content changes in layouts. Surprise. So these ones are going to be the ones that are going to allow us to pass from this boring transition right there, that is basically just changing the visibility, to a more interesting transition like the one right there. More smooth, more interesting. Overall, your users are going to love it. Trust me, add animations to everything. Great. Now that we know what we need um, to be doing this in this talk, like layout animations, what do we actually need to build them? We only need two things. The first one is, of course, some content changes. If you don't have any content changes, you don't have anything to animate. But we don't only need content changes. We need a way to observe them, OK? So now that you have your content change, how are you going to observe that and describe it in order for you to pass that to your APIs? You may have guessed this already, but of course, we're going to be using states. And when I say states, I am, of course, referring to this fellas right there. I hope this is no surprise to anybody uh, that you normally see in your composables already, and you're already passing them there and changing uh, properties. So in this case, we're going to use that same state for our animation APIs. OK? Great. Going back to our list of what we need, we need states. And then, of course, we need some animation APIs. But what are these animation APIs that are going to be animating our layouts? Don't worry. Let's go and answer that one next. If we go to our documentation, you find our nice and trustworthy flowchart for animations. It looks daunting, don't worry. But if you go right there into the start, you can see that the first question already is asking for layout animation APIs. If we follow that branch right there, ignoring everything else, we reach animated visibility, animated content or crossfade, and our animated content size. These are the basic animation APIs for layouts in our documentation. If we take a closer look at them, we can further uh, divide them into the ones that work with composables, which are the animated visibility, animated content, and crossfade, and the ones that work with modifiers, which in this case are animated content size. Now in this talk, we're going to focus on the ones that work with composables. But don't worry, everything we see today, you can also apply to the modifiers. Great. Now that we know which APIs we're going to be talking about, let's take a deeper look at them. So what are these composable APIs? In short, these composable APIs are composable functions that are going to handle all the animation logic. And in order to use them, the only thing you need to do is have an amazing UI and wrap it with your animated composable. And this one right there is going to handle all the work, like magic. The only thing you need to do is pass it the right state. Remember this part. It's all about the state. OK? Great. But now that we have the basics covered, let's drop this boring talk and let's start the show. So what do we need to start this amazing show? According to my super important and lengthy uh, research about this, we only need three things. A curtain, because of course, every great show has a curtain a conductor, because we don't want our performance like stepping right after the other, and of course, we need performers, someone, you know, to be shown. Great. Now that we know what we need, let's start right away and look at these APIs with our first example, the curtain. And of course, in order to create this one, we're going to be using our animated visibility. Nice. So how does this animated visibility works? It's quite simple, and probably the name already gave it away. But basically, what it's going to do 
is, is going to show its content or not, depending if the content is visible or not. Quite easy, right? But how do we see this on code? The first thing we need to do is, of course, define our state. Remember, all about the state. In this case, it's just a simple Boolean, which is going to tell us if it is visible or not. We can update this with whatever we want, clicking a button, appearing, yada, 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 doesn't matter. We have our state. The next step is we only need to create our animated visibility and pass it that state there. Once we have this, there's nothing else we need to do in order to obtain this animation. Great, that's it. But of course, it wouldn't be a show if we only go with boring default uh, transitions out of the box. Let's customize it. I want more. So how are we going to be doing that? The first thing I do whenever I find myself asking these questions is just come and click my way to victory and find the definition. If we get to the definition, we find this, our animated visibility function. And we can see right there that everything looks kind of standard. But there are two parameters there that are already like, looking really interesting. And those are enter and exit. These ones are the ones we're going to use to customize our animation. But how? What are these transitions? Let's define that next. So transitions, in short, are going to be the ones defining how a state change is animated. In practice, that translates to being an object that contains the start state, the target state, and also the animations that are going to be played in order to reach that target state, okay? I know it sounds a lot, but you can summarize it in our enter and exit context as the ones that are going to define how the view is going to appear or disappear, okay? It sounds complicated, but don't worry, you don't need to build anything. We already have a lot of them out of the box. So the only thing you need to do is go to the documentation and take a look at them. But how do we use them? Going back to our curtain example, the only thing I need to do is pass those parameters and change completely the way my view appears or disappears. We can make it slide, we can make it scale in, and my favorite part of this, we are not constrained to just using one. We can mix and match and create our own custom transition for entering and exiting. Great, no? There's already a ton of customization that I did, and I didn't have to write anything with math, anything crazy. I just basically went to documentation and picked the things that I wanted. But hey, what if I want even more? What if I, I am not satisfied with these transitions that I found in there? Well, you have two options. The first one is to go wild and, you know, create your own enter and exit transitions, but we don't do that, that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> the other part is basically go again to our uh, trusty definition and see what else is in there that I can use. If you take a closer look, there's another transition there, a transition right there inside the body of our function. Now, this transition is a bit different than the one with entering and exiting, but basically is the same thing. It's going to define how the change is going to happen. The difference is that this transition is kind of the base transition of the composable. It, you see it like as the main thread of the animation, so to say, where all the other transitions and animations are going to be plugged in, okay? So, instead of writing my own logic for enter and exiting, I can grab this one there, and start adding my own animations in that place. But don't worry, we're going to see an example on how exactly to do that. The only need to, you need to do is go again to your animated visibility, and in there, you're going to have access to transition. Now, in order to use transition, as I said, we're going to be adding our own animations. And in order to do that, we're going to use some trusty extension functions that are already in place for us, which are .animate. There are different for different values, like floats, like dps, or like color, that are going to let you add this type of animations to that transition. Now, the cool thing with this is that the only thing I need to do is grab that transition state, add the logic I want. In this case, I am just changing the color to green when it's visible, to red when it is not, and then just pass it to my composable. And just like that, I already changed the color. And of course, you're not just limited to do one thing. This is where you can go wild and start changing things, like change the text, for example, or even change the shape. Quite powerful, and I still didn't have to write a lot of code. Great. 
But I think this is enough customization for my curtain. I think my curtain is ready up away and to the side. So let's jump to the next composable, our conductor. And of course, for the conductor, we're going to be using crossfade. Great. But how does crossfade work? Crossfade is going to work kind of similar to what we had with animated visibility, but instead of just showing or hiding the content, it is going to change the content depending on the state it has. The main use of crossfade is to change screens or change the content in place uh, depending on the state. But great. Let's see how to actually use it. If we go again to the definition, we can see a main difference there is that the state, instead of being a Boolean, is a wild thing. You can pass whatever you want. So let's see an example. First, of course, as always, we need to define our state, which in this case is just going to be an enum class. We're going to be uh, showing a screen one or a screen two. Once we have our state, we just need to pass it in our composable, but this time, instead of just letting the composable run wild like we did in visibility, we need to actually write what we need to show depending on that state change. And just doing that, we have an animation. Or not, because the clicker stopped working. <laughs> there you go. Amazing. Um, great. So we have an animation. And as you can see, this is still not a lot of code. And I already have a nice fading animation in place. Great, but this is a basic animation. I want more, of course. There's nothing in this show that is going to be the fault. So you're already probably thinking like, hey, let's start changing the transitions, let's change the enter, let's change the exit, let's go wild. Well, I'm so sorry to tell you that in this case, we cannot do that. We are stuck with fade in and fade out. I mean, it's kind of, you know, in the name. Um, so basically, in order to animate this one and customize it, we're not going to be able to use the transitions as we did. But don't worry, there are more options. If we go into our definition, we can see that our trusty transition is still in place. So one option for you is to grab it again and do as we did with our curtain and start changing things. But if you don't want to go that crazy, you can see that there's another parameter that is talking about animations, and that's animation spec. Okay, but we haven't talk at all about animation spec. Let's do that now. So what is animation spec? In short, it defines how an animation runs. Okay? So if we had before that our transitions were going to define the general part of our animation, that's how I like to see it, like for example, a slide to the top left, this animation spec is actually going to tell us how we're going to be traversing that path. Are we going to go, the clicker is playing one on me. Um, anyway, animation spec is going to tell us how to actually traverse that path. It's going to tell us if we're going to go straight to the point, if we're going to go first super fast and they're super slow, or if we're going to be taking a detour, okay? The powerful thing about animation spec is that you don't need to change the animation process at all. You just need to define small customization, pass it to your animation, and have totally different behaviors. But don't worry, we're also going to use a lot of out-of-the-box things, so you don't need to write your own animation specs. There are several of them, though the initial four that I keep myself, uh, I find myself still using, are the ones that follow. The first one is Twin, which is a time-based animation that is basically going to go from start to end in an allotted time. We have Spring <laughs> is a physics-based one that has this nice bouncy effect. This one, instead of being time-based, is going to be physics-based. So instead of defining a time to finalize that animation, we're defining a velocity. The third one is keyframes. This is one of my favorites, to be honest, and this is because this gives us a lot of flexibility. As the name implies, instead of like defining a speed and defining uh, the velocity of the things, this is going to let us define some keyframes through the path that we want to reach. This is the one that allows us to do a vector. Like in this example, I'm doing a small jump before reaching. And the last one is snap. A snap just goes, like, is the non-nonsense animation, kind of skips all animations and just jumps directly to the target uh, state. Great. 
And as you can see, all of them behave quite differently and already give you a lot of flexibility on how your animation is going to play. And all of this out of the box. Nice. But let's see an example on how actually to use them. And let's go back to our conductor. As you may imagine, our conductor is not that flexible because it's using crossfade, but we still can do some things. We can make, for example, our screen change super slowly, or we can make it go snappy fast. Snappy fast, there you go. Or we can even make it bounce. <laughs> if the animation decides to play out, great. Nice. And as you can see, I am only changing one parameter. I don't need to do crazy things. So this is a lot of powerful animations that you can already have out of the box. But with this, I think our conductor is ready. Nice. We're making good time. Our show is going to be ready in no time. Nice. Now that we have a courting and we have a conductor, we need, of course, performers. And for that, we're going to be using animated content. Great. Hope I still have you around. So how does animated content works? Similar to Crossfade, this one is going to be changing its content according to the state. Differently than Crossfade, the intended uh, functionality of this one is to change the content inside, not precisely swapping screens like in Crossfade. Okay, so how does it work? If we take a look at our definition, we can see that the target state is again a wild. So let's create a simple example so we can start customizing this thing. You already know the drill by now, so first we need to define our state. In this case, we're going to go simple and just going to create a Boolean for visible. Then we need to pass it to our content. And of course, we need to again, do as we did with Crossfade, react to that state. In this case, I'm just changing visibility. So by doing this, I can have my curtain again. Great. But as you can see, the transitions are not the same. And that's because the default transitions in our animated content are different than the visibility one. And you may be wondering, do I really need to create this curtain with this content? The answer is no. You probably just want to use animated visibility. But you can also do it with this one. <laughs> this is more like a power horse. Anyway, leaving that to the side, let's jump into the customization. And yes, in this case, <laughs> come on, clicker. OK, the clicker is not working great. I'm going to move over here. So. In this case, we do have enter and exit transitions. So let's go back again to our definition. If we take a closer look, we can see that we don't have enter and exit parameters in this. We instead have transition spec. But don't worry, don't, don't be scared about all the fanfare and all. We can see that there are our usual fading scale and everything inside that lambda there. And the only, need, the only thing you need to remember is that when passing these transitions, Everything to the left is going to be enter transition. I mean, my left, so the right is going to be enter transition. And everything after the weed is going to be the exit transition. OK? So let's see an example on how to use it. Going back to our previous curtain, the only thing you need to do is pass that transition spec, define it, and voila. You have the same curtain that we had. Amazing. And with this, we have actually our first performer, the curtain. Nice, but this curtain is quite boring. It's just not doing a lot of things for us. So let's do a more interesting example, and let's jump to our performer number two, the click counter, or how I like to call it, the clicker. No fungus in this one, so don't worry. Um, great, so how do we create the clicker? Going back to the example that we had with Visible, the thing first we need to change is our state. Instead of using a Boolean this time, we're going to use a number that we're going to be updating every time the view is clicked. Once we have that, we're only going to be updating the state to change the text. And that's it. I have a clicker. I'm still not doing a lot of things, but I am like achieving a lot. As you can see, this API is quite powerful. But hey, this is a show, and this clicker looks kind of plain. So let's make it more interesting, adding a background and adding some font transitions. Nice. The clicker looks more interesting now, but it looks still a bit constrained, don't you think? But don't worry, we're going to make it better um, because we have another ace under our sleeve, and that is size transform. Yes, I may have led you a little bit uh, because our transition spec not only receives our enter and exit transitions, it also receives a third parameter, which is our size transform. 
In this case, we're passing a clip uh, boolean that basically is going to remove the bounce and free our clicker. And with this, I think the clicker is ready. And we have our second performer. But hey, I'm not going to just uh, let the size transform slide, so let's go and take a look at it. So what is actually size transform? In short, the size transform is going to define how a size changes over time. If we had our enter and exit transitions that we're going to be concerned about the visibility changes, the size transform is going to take care of any size changes that happen inside animated content. If we take a look again at our definition, we're going to see that it's quite simple. It's a simple function with just two parameters. The first one is clip, which as we saw is going to remove or add the bounds to our animations. And the second one is size animation spec. Again, don't worry too much about all the verbose parts in there. This is basically going to work as we did with our animation spec. Nice. But how do we actually use this thing? Even if it looks simple, it's quite powerful. So let's take another a look at our third performer and use size transform for this one. Let's create the size shifter. Nice. So how do we go around doing the size shifter? As with all of them, first let's start with the state. In this case, we're going to have a full screen and a quarter enum that is going to be changing every time I click a button. Once we have the state, we pass it, we pass the changes, yada, 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 as we saw before, and ta-da, we have our basic size shifter. But now that we want to use size transform for this one, let's try to make that animation more interesting. The only thing I need to do is first, we need to pass our transition spec parameter, and of course, before starting writing any code, I need to define what exactly size transform animation I want. For this one, I'm going to keep it simple, and we're going to build a regular uh, kind of size transform example, which is going to be, we're going to grow first one dimension before the other one. In this case, when we go full screen, we're going to first extend the width and then extend the height, and the other way around when we go to small pace. But let's write some code. So, transition spec. As with all the other uh, examples, first we need to define our fade in and fade out animations, which are our transitions for entering and exiting. You may be wondering why it's necessary uh, to do this thing because we're changing size. And that's because the way animated content and actually all the composables work is they have an initial state which has the view build, and whenever a new state comes in, they build another one and they push it in. So you still need to pass an enter and exit animations if you want to make your view interesting. Anyway, once we have that, we need to pass our size transform. The size transform lambda is basically going to be the definition for our animation specs, which in this case, I am going to be using keyframes. This is a full code for this one. Basically, what we're doing is first we're checking like what is the current state. This target state is coming for our animated content. So basically, everything that is happening on the first part is going to be when the animation size is growing, and the other one is when the view is shrinking. Once we have that, I am creating a keyframe animation spec. And the way this works is basically we need to define the frames in this format. First, we pass the value, and then we pass at what time in milliseconds that animation, that frame needs to be reached. So in this example, my keyframes are going to last a total of 600 milliseconds, and at the mid time, that frame needs to be reached, which in the first scenario is reach the max width of the animation and keep the same height as before, and in the second one is keep the same width but reach the height as animation. I know it sounds a bit verbose, but basically that is just making, if, you go, if you're going to go big, first go wide and then go height. If you're going to go small, first reduce and then shrink on the width. And with that, we reached the animation that we wanted. Now, of course, this transition spec allows you to do more than just these things and gives you a lot of flexibility for changing things. So it's really easy to pass from this one to just adding more states and adding more transition spec rules to change it for this. A say shifter that only also has the half sizes. Nice. And with this, I say our size shifter is done. The only thing we have to do was define a custom size transform. Amazing. With this, I think we have our performers ready. We had our curtain, which is basically creating, and let me see, the clicker works. We have our curtain, which is using kind of a fake animated visibility, 
we have our clicker, which is using a default size transform with a clipping false. And we have our size shifter, which is using a custom size transform rule set. And with this, what you just saw right now, which I just saw is not a lot of code, you can create even more performers. You can create the twins. Yes, that's for tween. You can create some bubbles, or you can create some happy bars. But hey, I have a show to run, so we have to keep this for the next time. So thank you. If you want to learn more, um, you can take a look at the repo where you can see a lot of these examples in code. Most of the screens have a lot of uh, things you can play around real time and options, et cetera, et cetera. I also recommend to check the documentation in Compose and videos regarding animation APIs. Now for real, thank you. <laughs> I don't know if there's any question. I can solve them now, or you can find me afterwards. Yes. I don't, in, in my play, experimenting with uh, animating views out, um, sometimes I'm rendering state that is uh, not going to be valid in certain other uh, view states. So uh, like I might have a, a screen where I'm entering information, and then I'm going to transition into it, like it's sending it to our back end or something. Now, when I, if I try to transition between those, the initial state, maybe my form data, is no longer part of my state. The ones you want to show. Mm -hmm. And how would you typically handle something like that to, to not yeah. crash? <laughs> not crash. Um, yeah, the trick there is to define correctly your state. Uh, the way the animation composables work is they're going to be changing according when the state changes. So the rule for this is whatever you define at your stage should be the things that are going to be changing inside that composable. So you, for example, have a view that is showing some data. Instead of just passing like the size as a, uh, a state to change, you need to pass the whole object that is going to be changing containing the data so the animation is updated correctly. Um, this basically translates that anything that is not added in the state is not going to be considered by the composable and it can potentially crash. I don't know if that answered your question. I can show you an example afterwards if that was not clear. Any more questions? Uh, yeah, so I was thinking, when using, is, is, yeah, is there any way to get a visibility, or is, it's called animated visibility scope, mm -hmm. without using a composable yeah exactly because i i've been using a lot of like on the modifier itself the mm -hmm. animated enter entry. and exit yeah exactly but that requires of course an animated scope yeah uh, sadly no the only way we can use the modifiers for enter and exiting is inside an animated composable All right. we didn't touch modifiers in this one but yeah that's one of the limitations because we need that main transition in order to add animations in place yeah. basically that's the restriction thanks I mean, you can go crazy and create your own, but I don't recommend it. Hi, thank you for talk. Uh, you probably answered this one, but uh, how about uh, shared elements? Uh, so, uh, so like uh, you have uh, something on the first screen, you want to animate to something on the second screen. Is there something in standard API, or you have to do something more? for like changing transitions inside it. Uh, we have some uh, transitions already building, for example, in navigation and a lot of things in the Android Jetpack APIs. Uh, but if you want to do those kind of sharing information between screen and animating it, you will need a state that lives uh, in both screens, basically. It's not as a straightforward. Normally what I do is I create a view that is going to be handling that transition and just make it live in there. You can just divide it with other composables, and that way you just not, you know, everything in one file. Okay, but it means also a lot of code, yeah? Sorry? It's a, it means a more more code. Uh, okay, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, basically that's the workaround that I do. Uh, but I don't know if someone has any idea on how to do that. Uh, I haven't found any besides using the normal APIs and changing animation specs in there, or just having a kind of general animation that is going to be hosting all that, and then each of the other components handle its own.
let's say, <coughs> sorry, uh, let's say you have a button uh, and, do, and you want to do uh, an animation related to the position of that button. How could you do that? For the position of what, sorry? Uh, so you want to make a, um, a new screen uh -huh. uh, starting from the position of the button. Oh, okay. Yeah, like growing it or making it small. Uh, there are a couple of ways you can do that. The first one is whenever you define the size of, like, for example, your button and you want to do this growing animation, you can use... Um, <laughs> The look ahead layout to do that, that's one of the ways. Um, I didn't cover it in this talk, but it's one of the options. The other one is most of the animated content, whenever we change sizes, for example, we can override our size transform and just make it change that way. So the way you, I would do it would be like have an animated content wrap it that button, and then when it grows, just make it grow from that position up. That makes sense. But yeah, I would use look ahead layout or that workaround. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thanks. So I have a question regarding state management where mm -hmm. um, sometimes I end up with kind of strange code. For example, we have this, um, we have like an, an element and that should um, slide in from the button. Mm -hmm. And um, we want to show it, like uh, slide it in if like the view state coming in is like not null but we want to hide it if it's null. So like this animation in, is, it's kind of easy to do. Mm -hmm. But if you do the animation out, then now the view state is null, so you can no longer really render it. And then the element vanishes while you animated it out. I think that also touches back on the other question regarding state. Uh, if you have, basically how it works is like, anything you pass into state, the animation a composable is going to handle. The thing that you be really need to be really uh, careful about is use the target state that is provided inside the scope of that animation. So for example, uh, if you have a state with data that is changing, uh, the animation composable in this case, for example, would create the first state, the initial state, with the data that it had, and then it's going to create the next one with the future information. And that's how it's going to swap it. If the state uh, information, like the information that you're showing here is not in the state, that's when those kind of things happen. So basically the answer is you need to be careful that the state that you're passing contains everything that is going to be changing in the screen. At least that's in my experience. Because I found those basically when I tried to change data and that data was not linked in the state. And that's what happens. Thanks. Actually I can show an example after this if you want uh, with that. But yeah, remember, it's all about the state. Whatever is changing, and that's the key here, whatever is going to be changing your screen needs to be in that state. If not, the animated composable is not going to know about it. Hello, thank you for the great talk. Um, I have a question. Is there a best practice for agreement on animations? So if many developers make fancy stuff with all these different animations and your app look like um, yeah, old Crazy. websites, linking <laughs> everything. So is there a best practice way how you, how you proceed with such? So every developer agree, okay, this is the animation for clothing, this is the animation for the transition. Is there a best practice that you can, uh, every developer knows what he have to do, which animation he have to select? Um, the quick answer there is no, and that's good, because animations are meant to be creative. So there is no like rule set that you need to follow. If you want to have a standardized behavior, you can just basically stick to the out of the box animations that you have, but there's no rules. That's a cool thing here. Like you can do whatever you want in your app. And these are really efficient already, so there's, not a lot of, I mean, it could be, but there's not a lot of things to worry about, like junking and stuff like that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, let's just make fun animations. It's fine, you're allowed. Um, hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, I was wondering about the duration. Um, like, how exact is it? Like, uh, for instance, with coroutines, you're not really guaranteed to have 300 milliseconds. Um, so if you 
would um, try to render like a counter uh, or seconds, whatever, then mm -hmm. it sometimes jumps a little bit because of that. So these are leveraging on coroutines, basically. So <laughs> it's kind of the same. <laughs> The good thing, though, is that uh, on time an animations, uh, most of the APIs are skippable. So in case you want to like uh, sh cut it short, it just jumps into the uh, last target state. So it's not like it's going to freeze while your animation is playing. Great. If there are no more questions, thank you again. And thank you for coming. <laughs>